Because if you are able to change people or make them behave opposite to their instincts, then you have really strong brainwashing and hold and control over them, which means they trust your opinion and follow your frame even yes, more than remember the foundation for great sales. It's not to pitch, it's not to speak about features and benefits, but it's to eliminate all the objections, eliminate all the obstacles, eliminate all the alternatives, so that the only thing left is what you offer and it becomes the only logical solution. RSD Derek Moneyberg is definitely top three best manipulators we've ever come across. What lessons can we learn from his techniques today? I'm not religious, but my, my ancestors here were Polish Jews. Um, but I'm still a Jew at heart. I, I like money and money. First, he's bringing people into his narrative, which makes him an interesting character. And one trait that makes a character complex or very interesting and fascinating, they will say things that are shocking and that people will disagree with. Because if a character was Mr. Nice Guy all the time, he will not be interesting. He needs to bring a bit of the bad boy out. And in the very beginning, he was doing something important and related to the prime directive of this channel. He was showing people that he is part of their tribe. Why is that? Human beings have two very deep instincts in the lizard brain, but a lot of people who are selling and marketing don't tap into those. They focus on features and benefits. The two tracks within the lizard brain are survival and reproduction. The only fangirls trigger within the simps the track and hope for reproduction, so it becomes an irrational relationship where money doesn't mean a thing. They will give that girl all the attention, all the money, all the romantic gestures, even through comments, buying her Amazon wish list, joining her OnlyFans, etc. Because it triggered something where the prime directive of their DNA says, this is a chance I have at reproduction, let me throw everything at it. In the same way, and now on a parallel track, is the survival track, where a lot of these gurus first show they are part of the tribe, but then that they are the highest status person within that tribe. Because that instinct for survival has a big component of wanting to be protected by the highest status person within the tribe because status throughout history and throughout evolution, it was 100% correlated with strength and ability to survive, not like nowadays where it can be cleverly manipulated through language and through psychological ventriloquisms. So imagine all the people within the tribe who have failed, who have low self-esteem or know they are weak, they are searching for a protector and someone that will be the strong father figure and the person who, when the tribe is attacked, they can rely on to save them and allow their DNA and their bodies and families to survive longer. But this is triggered for the highest status person or the strongest person within the tribe. And that's why a lot of the manipulators make sure two things. One, that they show they're part of the tribe because this desire to be protected by the strongest person doesn't trigger to other tribes or enemies or anything like that. So you need to show you're part of the tribe and that's what he's doing. He is in Poland and showing people, oh, I have Polish roots, etc. And secondarily, that you are the highest status person and the strongest person within the tribe because if you defer to someone who seems to be stronger, all this desire for protection will go to that person and you will not trigger it for yourself. And this desire to be protected is irrational and it focuses on building reciprocity and goodwill with the strongest person because if you're weak, what do you have to offer them? So they serve them, they obey them, they give them all the money, they follow their boundaries and rules, which means sales are not based on 100% on benefits and on features and on what is it for me because what they are buying is their survival and therefore it becomes irrational and money becomes irrelevant no matter how expensive it is. And that is a foundation for a lot of the huge business success and the high fees that such gurus can engineer and can create. And money 
Does anybody here like money? Yeah. No. Yeah. So money is good. Take care of the things that you can take care of. You know, the person who's not doing that is, um, you know, you can't do this long term. It's just, it's, you know, your, your, our old ancestor Aristotle talked about this, you know, 2,500 years ago, that uh, you know, excellence is a habit. What is he doing there? He is associating within his brain or anchoring himself to greet people like Aristotle and understand the principle behind anchoring in NLP is that when neural pathways fire together, they get associated together. And therefore, when he fires the neural pathway of Aristotle around here and himself, because you're looking at him, you're hearing his voice, they get associated and therefore part of the wisdom of the legend of the status of Aristotle gets imbued upon him and understand that this is a Kaizen game where it's 0.1% added up and compounded creates huge brainwashing and persuasion. Having an excellent life is a habit. It's a habit. This is not a new idea. This is not some modern self-help. 2,500 years ago, Aristotle says excellence is habit. And you know, the, the, the habits that you engage in, uh, it is a rightful indicator about, uh, you know, certainly is a rightful indicator of the sort of success or failure to have success that you, you should expect in your life. Uh, Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's business partner, I, I like to say this. Now he is triggering Charlie Munger, who is a business guru. In the beginning, he triggered Aristotle also because part of his brand, he wants to seem like he is the Jesus or the prophet of money. And that's one of the reasons he has that hair, if you look at him and his look. And he has it, one of his products is the Ten Commandments that show him literally as that religious figure. Now he's triggering Charlie Munger so that he gets associated. And remember, every time 0.1% added to him adds up to a lot of status and he hits it from many angles. Quote from him that he says the best way to get what you want in life is to deserve it. He says, how would the world be so crazy to go around you know, highly rewarding a bunch of undeserved people? I think you know, money is a lifestyle choice. I grew up very poor. I grew up very poor. I could tell you stories. We would all cry together. You have stories too. What is he doing there with the belief that he's engineering that money is a lifestyle choice? A lot of people have limiting beliefs. They have tried many things and failed and failed again. And therefore, they worry about disappointing themselves and they oscillate between two attitudes. One attitude is, I'm not good enough, I'm an imposter, I will never be able to do this. And the other attitude is that this is unfair, the game is rigged, life is against me, uh, I will never do it because of external factors. Because to blame yourself reduces your serotonin, which is a very stressful experience and a cortisol-inducing life choice, which many cannot bear for long. So they need to blame on an outside scapegoat and... He's trying to overcome this objection by speaking about money as a lifestyle choice, which means it's 100% under your control and possible. And therefore, he's trying to eliminate many excuses at once. Because remember, the foundation for great sales, it's not to pitch, it's not to speak about features and benefits, but it's to eliminate all the objections, eliminate all the obstacles, eliminate all the alternatives, so that the only thing left is what you offer and it becomes the only logical solution. So we, could just, we could all cry together like a bunch of lames. But um, you're all here because you have a sad story too, by the way. If, you had, if every day of your life was great, you don't come to see someone like me. You, know, you came here because you felt like a little bitch. You got tired of feeling like a little bitch and you know that maybe I can help you with that. So here you are. Again, same thing. He's overcoming all the objections on why they cannot do it, what's wrong with them, etc. by saying it's a lifestyle choice and everybody has those excuses. And therefore, again, he's engineering all the beliefs that lead to the sales of say, his high ticket products becoming automatic, easy, and seeming like they are the idea of the audience and something that was their choice and therefore they're invested into it rather than feeling pressured into it which can lead to refunds leads to unsatisfaction people feel it is their choice and therefore no matter how harsh he is or how difficult the courses are they accept it as their own personal responsibility and that's what he's trying to create because also it creates better clients for him who will do more and therefore he gets more out of their result. And that's true of every one of us. I certainly felt that way plenty of times in my life, so I know the feeling. Poverty is a lifestyle choice, wealth is a lifestyle choice. You know, here, here, let's talk about money for a moment. Favorite topic of mine. Why does he say money is a favorite topic of mine? In copywriting, there are ways that lower status salespeople and marketers do to justify the price, which is by comparing it to alternatives, saying how much it is per day to make it cheaper. When you reduce it from the full year price to one day, it seems like it's as expensive as a price of coffee or all those options. But what he is doing, he is using a different thing that the greatest manipulators do, which is 
Have you ever wondered why they have the yachts and the Ferraris and the mansions? And yes, those work as an aspirational identity, but very importantly, they work as a justification for the high fees. And now when he says, I love money, I'm all about money, when he asks for high fees, it seems to be expected and justified because... If you're someone who's living in a mansion in the Hamptons coming out of a convoy of Rolls Royces and supercars to go to your private jet and you quote people $50,000 or $100,000 for one year of coaching, the people who can afford it will think, yes, I want that life of that person. And yes, it will be disrespectful if I expect him to ask for 50 bucks or 500 bucks or a thousand. So of course, it will be related. For him, it opens his negotiation position from a place of strength where he says, I love money, my favorite topic, and all that. So if people come to him and he quote them the price of his coaching, which is for every course, it's 5000 and he recommends to people to take all three of his courses, so it's 15000 You will not think, oh, he's a saint who never mentioned money and feel shocked when he mentions a high fee. He is already persuading people and justifying the price without seeming low status and low value. I went to the salt mines the other day. I also went to Auschwitz the other day. I've been there before, but I've been several times to Poland now. Uh, but you know, some of you have the same story that you know, some of my ancestor died uh, in the concentration camps uh, for parts of our family that didn't leave here early enough. What is he doing there by relating himself and his family to dying in the concentration camps? It's a screenwriting technique of creating likability for a character to make it a more complex character and therefore more fascinating, which is called Jeopardy. When something bad happened to your family, to you, to you growing up, people feel like you're an underdog who succeeded. And so they feel, wow, if he could do it, I can do it. And everybody relates to someone who has struggled and therefore they feel an intersection of stories or like their life is closer and therefore it creates a parasocial connection through social media, YouTube and videos. And remember, he's creating a complex and fascinating character by saying things that are shocking as well as showing likability and goodness. And this oscillation between two seemingly opposites make people unable to figure him out and therefore he stays interested. Uh, several generations ago, there's at least two generations I'm aware of in my family that's working in the salt mines not so far from here. And look at us today. They're like, you have every fucking opportunity. You have every fucking opportunity. There's something called the internet that, you know, that you too, many of you would have some of these same stories. You had the ancestors, they had some shitty job where uh, you know, it couldn't be a fun time. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it was great, but it couldn't be a fun time to me going down, you know, uh, hundreds of meters underground, steps and ladders, hundreds of meters underground, using a fucking torch, you know, using a lantern or a torch to fucking see, to go chip away at some fucking rock salt. This seems like a normal story, but it's actually a metaphor. And metaphors are the most persuasive thing to the human brain because it allows the communicator to bypass all the skeptical patterns that human beings have by presenting a situation that seems to be different and therefore all the stimuli and triggers for resistance within the listeners don't flare up, yet the lesson or the point he wants to make that is important to the persuasion will pass through. And so he is engineering a chain of beliefs. He engineered first that money is important, that having money and wealth is a lifestyle choice. And third, that even if it requires a lot of hard work is not as bad as war working in a salt mine or being in a concentration camp. So there are way worse things in the world and they should be grateful to have the opportunity to work that hard in order to become wealthy. And then haul this hundreds of meters up. Is, you know, and that's your life, you know, that's your life. And, and some of your ancestors who are engaging in work like this are happier than some of you are. And somewhere in their mind, well, they're doing this day after day for years, for decades perhaps, they think to themselves, you know, I'm, going to, I'm going to give uh, my son more opportunities. My children will have opportunities that I did not have. How, how, what would these same people think if they saw today some of the things that you get stressed out about, or some of the things you're concerned about? Like, they would spit on you. They would laugh in your face. They'd have to spit on you for the, for the, for the, the sort of lifestyle that they had, and, you know, in limited options versus the sort of lifestyle that's available to all of us in tremendous options. Like, poverty is a lifestyle choice. This is great. So he is doing what Gary Vee does of presenting a different context where he took the same situation they are in but presented one that is way worse so that by contrast they will think oh my god I have so many options which take them away from one of the objections which is my life sucks, I am depressed, I cannot take action because of my negative mood, I don't have many opportunities and he is showing or speaking about how those 
people in the mines, they were happier, although they had less opportunities, and triggering one of the legacy desires within the lizard brain, which is to give your children more opportunities and a better life than you have, which for some people it will hit emotionally and therefore it can be a reason for them to buy. And understand that because he's speaking to a whole audience, he doesn't know specifically what each person trigger point to buy is. So he creates a chain of belief that moves the whole group towards buying as well as peppering within it reasons that if they hit the right person at the right time and he might get a few this way just making more money if it hits the right person at the right time it will lead to a sale because the person would be in that modus operandi of thinking i need a sign what is the sign for me to go forward with this and if he says that and they were thinking oh i want to give more opportunities for my children i want to, them to have a better life they will think yes this is a sign i was waiting for as well as being a polish jew in the concentration camp if any of them had family related like that they'll be like this is a sign we are destined to meet together or whatever it is so it's also part a more clever and more advanced way of both doing the right copywriting thing of creating chains of beliefs through gradualization and check out Eugene Schwartz's work to understand this further, as well as the fact that a lot of people buy when they feel connected to someone. A lot of people get even more attached to the strongest person in the tribe if they feel they have commonalities because they think, oh my God, this is possible and this is for a reason, it's destiny, and therefore it makes them work even harder to get the validation of this person because the relationship feels even more special. You can do whatever the fuck you want, but most of you won't. But most of you won't. You'll just do what the other people are doing. You'll just look around you and you say, well, I'm doing that much better on this one metric than the rest of these idiots, so that I can give myself permission to feel good about myself then. What if you just did everything that you could every day? What if you just did everything you could? What if you did, you know, that thousand times a day when you have that decision point in your head of, you know, well, should I do the thing that's easy right now or should I do the thing that I know that would give me the better outcome right now? What if like 20% of those, you actually did the fucking thing that would give you a better life? Instead of being a little bitch and just say, oh, you know, just path of least resistance, path of least resistance. What is he doing there? He is doing the aspirational identity, which works as a very deep and subtle carrot and stick motivation for human beings. So he is contrasting the aspirational identity he wants within people of people who take action and choose what may gives them a better life within the day rather than what he calls a little bitch or the people who shy away from giving their all every day as well as comparing themselves to mediocre people thinking that if they're slightly more than mediocrity therefore they are okay and he wants them to reject this which will be the move away from and people don't really know what they want they know and they can easily get clarity on what they don't want so when they say i don't want this but where should i go he's giving them the aspirational identity of being the person who chooses what gives them a better life a thousand times a day which is an idea that david goggins speak about a lot in that perspective that when you're around mediocre people you compare yourself to mediocrity you think you're doing well because you're the best out of the worst people while if you're uncommon among the uncommon people that's when you are reaching your potential just do the easy thing just be pathetic your ancestors would be very disappointed in some of you you really would you have the internet you have fucking jets you can get in a fucking jet and fly all over the world i do it every week you can get on a fucking jet and just go anywhere, rather inexpensively. What is he doing there? And the throwaway comment of, I do it every week flying on a jet, it again positions him as the highest status person within the tribe. So they are in that room, they're looking at him, they don't fly on jets every week, he does. And nowadays, money is equated to people to strength for survival. And therefore, money became not only a symbol, but the incarnation of survival even more than other ways of strength. And that is what he is presenting and peppering within a motivational story, but it's not really motivational. He is again overcoming all the objections and therefore the only thing left for anyone to do is say yes, because he took away all the reasons that would say no. You have the internet, you can make money and say, oh, but I live in Poland and you know, the, the economy here is, you know, 40% of Germany or whatever it is. Okay, great. You have the same fucking access to the internet that the fuck Germans do. And that they do in the US. And that they do all over Asia and every fucking place else. So go find some fucking money. Go find some fucking money. 
It's, it's, it's a fucking choice. Your, your, your net worth, your sex life, and many other things is a fucking choice. Why am I 14 kilos too fat right now? Because I fucking ate too much. Because I was a pussy and I didn't do the things that I know that I'm supposed to do in that part of my life. This is not a mystery to me. What is he doing there? And yes, because he preaches discipline, hard work, and all that. People look at him and will say, well, if you preach discipline and hard work, why are you fat? So he makes sure also to overcome that objection because one of the things is feeling that the guru is not living to the values that they preach or espouse is one of the objections that can make many turn away from him and not trigger that desire to get his protection and give him all their money. So now he is overcoming this objection as well as showing that if he is harsh with himself, therefore he can also be harsh with them, that's okay because he's treating everybody in a fair way or similarly and people prefer fairness that is harsh to everyone than unfairness that favors some and unfavors others if it doesn't favor them. But if it favors them, then they love of injustice. It's certainly not something I'm proud of, and I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I feel like the order of magnitude of the opportunities that I've had in other areas outweighed the benefit of losing that weight now. So I make sure my muscles are good, my finances are great, my, my everything's great, sex life's great, friends, your group great, everything's great, except that one thing. And I'll fix that too. And imagine how small I'll be then. But um, you do whatever you want. You won't do it because it's easy. If it was easy, everybody else would do it too. You have to find something that's difficult. You have to find something that's difficult and go do it every day and just chip away at it and differentiate yourself from the others. What is he doing there? He's trying to overcome what many marketers are trying to do, which is appeal to the desire of human beings for NESB, which makes the sales much, much easier, but it creates way worse clients because they become almost like spoiled brats when they buy things because they're new, they're easy, they're super safe and they're big, but these get more attention and attract people more than the opposite of new, which is old, and he tried to overcome that by speaking about Aristotle and principles that are 2,500 years old or more, so he's trying to overcome this, which is interesting. I think he wants to get less clients, but more highly indoctrinated, because if you are able to change people or make them behave opposite to their instincts, then you have really strong brainwashing and hold and control over them, which means they trust your opinion and follow your frame, even more their natural instincts and tendencies, which is like I said, new, he wants them to go for old, easy, he wants them to go for hard, safe, I think he's keeping it as he's saying it's a lifestyle choice, which means it's almost certain it is safe, big, also he's keeping it somehow by saying the opportunity is big, you can be in private jets every week, there is no limit to the potential you can make, go make some money through the internet, so is trying to overcome the two first or change them in order to have even more control over people while keeping the safe and big within what he is communicating. And if you can do that, you can have anything you want. But that's, you know, how many of you, how many of you would be honest enough to admit there's, there's three things right now that you, you know goddamn well you should be doing, but you just haven't been doing it recently. You're saying there's at least three things that you know if you did it, your life would be better and you just been a little pussy about it. Yeah. This is very interesting and it's a deep study in the human psychology. There is a book that is titled I know what to do, so why don't I do it, which is from 2007, so he probably is very, very aware of it, but it's the case for all human beings, and therefore he is pacing their reality, which means if he can make them feel or think, wow, this guy understands my reality so perfectly, he knows my situation even better than I do, then just like a doctor who diagnosed the illness, you trust that person to have have the solution or the cure and therefore if he seems to understand their situation perfectly but he is using cold reads based on deep psychological understanding then they think oh my god he understands me so well this is it's like he's talking to me one-on-one -on -one. and if he knows this which I shared with nobody then I'm sure he knows how to get me to the goal and to the other side which makes again more people want to pay him money and show strength because he can even read their mind. I had a university professor once 
I took some honors class called Utopia of Imagination, and, uh, and he told us to write a paper about you know, what, what is your utopia, and you know, he wanted a, a static outline, of, you know, a fixed outline of what would be the ultimate utopia. And I, I wrote a 10-page paper instead describing why this is not possible, that by the time, you know, if you had the ability to, to live your utopic situation, you would also whimsically change it from moment to moment. What is he doing there? First, an important part of why he wants to show authority and the way he does it is speaking about his university, and he repeats it again and again until people memorize it, and therefore in this story, by mentioning his professor, and the paper he is showing that he's studying and what he is sharing is from the very best minds and remember he's triggering university and academics and professors and himself by people looking at him the, the neural pathways for both so that it creates additional status for him and it's his choice that's what he is choosing which helps him present his coaching and high-end courses as almost university courses which helps justify and anchor the high fee and the high price which is clever but the fact he did not submit to the professor which asked for a specific question and he answered with something totally different it's the same as he did in the previous video i did about him where he was speaking about julian and owen cook or rsd tyler and how he did not obey rsd tyler when he asked him for something it shows he is the highest status person within the group because if he is willing to say no or to contradict a professor he is showing the three marks of being super high status the highest status within the group which is superiority and talking about the university private jets is part of that autonomy which means he can lose any interaction because he can rebuild from scratch and he has so much abundance he doesn't need any one thing and this is a specific show of autonomy to a high status figure which means he is even higher than that and therefore it keeps that desire to be protected triggered toward him and compliance and in this case compliance is subtle anytime people will decide throughout the day to go to the route when they're not being a little bitch they will be telling their lizard brain i am complying with what Derek Moneyberg says and therefore it implies to the lizard brain he is your leader and as I mentioned in my most recent Iman Gaji video that the strongest persuasion happens between persuasion sessions and that's why Iman Gaji had three videos to sell his digital renaissance rather than one long big one because when people listen to this and then they go through their life when they behave according to what he said here even a little bit they are persuading themselves that one Derek Moneyberg can affect their life and change their behavior and therefore it's proof that he can be their guru and mentor and secondarily some of the ideas that are necessary for the sale they will take on as their own ideas and therefore when he presents his courses they will think wow i was thinking about this all along you it's like you read my mind and gave me exactly what i needed but it was subtly ingrained and engineered those beliefs within them and those ideas became part of their psyche but because he did it indirectly with what is called masking of intent or colloquially known as hidden agenda which makes it even more effective